little visible changes in the COVID-19 epicenter of Wuhan, where streets and public transportation remain deserted. Despite a new rise in cases, international health officials have hailed the Chinese response of moving medical teams to Hubei and Wuhan. There's no question that China's bold approach to the rapid spread of this new respiratory pathogen has changed the course of what was a rapidly escalating and, and continues to be deadly epidemic. In Seoul, authorities closed and disinfected government buildings after at least three lawmakers came into contact with an official who tested positive for the virus. South Korea reported the smallest increase in four days, though there were several dozen new cases of the virus confirmed on Tuesday, bringing the total number of infections to more than 890. Meanwhile, concerns have grown that the illness could spread unannounced in secretive North Korea, whose only international trade partner is China. Though no cases have been confirmed, the Red Cross has obtained an exemption from UN sanctions to provide testing kits and medical equipment in the event of an outbreak. The disease has now affected more than 30 countries worldwide, as Bahrain, Afghanistan and Iraq reported their first cases. Though the head of the World Health Organization acknowledged the rise in cases around the world is concerning, he reiterated there is no need for panic. For the moment, we are not witnessing the uncontained global spread of this virus. Does this virus have pandemic potential? Absolutely, it has. Are we there yet? From our assessment, not yet. Still, health authorities have raised concern about clusters of the illness in Iran and in Italy, where authorities have not yet identified patient zero.